Hey guys, welcome back to VR Essentials. Today, very cool video as we're here to talk about the update of the actual Pimax itself. I'm going to give you the lowdown as to what it means and also I'm going to give you a little guide as to how to install the new update, of course, and talk a little bit more about the foveated rendering as this is something that has been added in today's updates with some gameplay and all the rest. So let's jump right into it, guys. Let me just go to the actual documentation itself let's go to the pictures there we go and let's talk about the actual updates that are happening today so we have some eye tracking enhancements new lighthouse mode controllers tracking refinement 120 hertz refresh rate optimization integrated all-in-one mode and charging performance in enhancement so i will definitely do some more videos about the 120 hertz refresh rate optimization so do hit the the excuse me notification bell after you subscribe for more details about that also of course about the integrated all-in-one mode as well for the eye tracking we will talk about this today the new lighthouse i won't be able to talk about that of course controllers generally was very good already so it will be amazing to see what the difference will be so do hit the notification bell for more details about that and charging performance enhancement as well i will talk about this a bit later on also so guys all right so first of all let me just there we go back to the camera let's first of all show you I'm going to give you some tips and tricks also because it wasn't very easy for me to actually do the installation of the update itself i have to say so let me give you some tips right now so just so you know guys i did have to go into the settings and also make sure to click on check updates as you will need to update the actual os of the pimax as well as the actual pimax itself so the way to do that for for basically uh, updating the Pimax is you're going to have to make sure that you plug in your USB-C cable from the actual Pimax hub into the Pimax input on the other end for the USB-C. Do not plug your USB-C, well for me it didn't work anyway, from the uh, input of the USB-C from the Pimax into the, from your PC into your Pimax. So make sure that you plug it from the hub itself, the Pimax hub, and then into your Pimax with the USB-C part and not the USB-A part from the PC or from, a, you know, something on an electronic electric plug or something or socket into your Pimax. Make sure it's from the hub as it did not work for me. The other thing is make sure that your Pimax has enough battery because after basically it reached about 20% of battery or something and it would not allow me to actually do the update on the device itself and that was a bit problematic as it took me about three hours to then basically recharge the battery to the full and i decided to recharge both batteries so yeah three hours it took me to do the recharging before i was able to actually proceed with the actual update itself and then once you click on update for basically the Pimax, well, then it will take a few minutes, maybe five minutes or 10 minutes. I have to say that it's generally not straightforward to get the Pimax to connect to my PC. I have to fill around a lot with the actual wires all the time. I don't know if there's a problem with my wires. Maybe I need to tell Pimax about this, but especially the power plug from the power hub into the socket, which is the basically the round cable. It seems to not connect properly or click in properly or something to the hub, which means that the electricity is not running properly and it keeps disconnecting from my PC to... Yeah, so my Pimax keeps disconnecting to the PC and that is quite problematic. And then sometimes it's the actual USB-A cable with the funny one that goes inside of the hub. Again, it seems to want to disconnect. So I don't know, it's just touch and go. I have to fill around a lot with the wires all the time. I don't know if there's a specific way to, you know, maybe you have to open the Pimax software first and then the HMD or the HMD first and then the Pimax software first. I don't know. I need to try a little bit more, but it doesn't seem to make a difference, to be honest with you, when I did the trial before. I think it's just an issue with the actual connectors of the wires. Are you having this issue as well? 
do make sure to leave a comment below if you're having problems like that where your Pimax is simply not connecting to the Pimax software it's most probably got to do something with the connectors of the wires themselves so as I mentioned leave a comment below let me know what kind of issues what kind of problems you guys have but do make sure your Pimax is connected before you do the actual HMD updates as this is really really crucial so guys the optimized settings that I was able to get after doing the actual update and also testing the headset quite a lot I will give you my feedback about 120 hertz at the end of this video so do watch until the end and do smash the notification bell as I mentioned after you subscribe as I will upload more videos about 120 versus 90 hertz as well so in terms of the refresh rate normally well I tested it both at 120 and 90 I'll let you know later about this backlight I leave it as is eye tracking of course you have to switch it on after you die the do you do the update so that you can do the auto IPD and also for the eye tracking you can use it for things like VR chat and we will do more videos about these kind of videos uh, these kind of topics as well for eye tracking calibration as I think I mentioned in the video before it is rather easy all you do is you go inside you look up you look down you look left you look right and basically what will happen is that it will auto calibrate and know where you're looking in the actual headset it only takes a few minutes so there's no big issues with that to be honest with you in terms of the games well I leave it as is for the render quality though I do bring it to minimum as if I would to render it further it will create more issues for me in game so I rather increment my SteamVR video settings for the pixel resolution as opposed to doing it in the actual software itself but it is possible that for you if you have a 4000 plus series card that you may not have these issues as I'm running on an RTX 2070 guys uh, also so for dynamic foveated rendering I found that it worked best on balanced but of course you can check it out and of course there's a list of games by the way that are not compatible with it and that are compatible with it, with it excuse me for example if you were to run AMS2 this is best to be switched off as it will create some issues with your latency and lagging so do be aware of this not every game is compatible with the foveated rendering FYI so if you have any issues make sure it is switched off for smart smoothing also I leave it on and hidden area mask I leave it on however compatible with Vive only I switch this off for the general normally speaking for home I leave it off also I don't need any home whatsoever and then as you can see on the actual screen itself the firmware log I switch off as well and then for advanced I do auto lens off as well as I mentioned maybe I mentioned in a previous video it actually creates some issues for me so for the auto lens I will also make sure that is off and look with the main level I will put it on balanced so I don't know if you can see the foveated rendering but basically here on the side of the lens you can see it's all pixelated whilst if we move move towards more the center then everything is clear and then at the background as well you can see that all the pixels there are not rendered properly they're all completely you know jaggered and pixelated and everything so it's really trying to focus on what it thinks I'm looking at at this moment in time but then if I was to move the headset for example more towards this side then suddenly things will start to become clearer whilst at the back it's still not that clear and then so whatever it thinks I'm looking at at the center it will basically render properly and then what I am so if I go back here there you go it's not rendered and then suddenly it should become more clear if it thinks that I'm looking here so of course it will use my eye to track and make sure that it knows what I'm looking at in order to render things so that the gameplay is supposedly have to be I mean will be basically faster and better of course so let's put it in action so guys I have to say that I even tested the Pimax crystal at 120 Hertz and I was able to bump up the settings in Steam VR to more than 5,000 resolution per eye and it was working completely fine with Aceto Corta but of course it's not a guarantee for every single game and of course do also remember that the foveated rendering is not going to be compatible with every single VR experience as well and I have to say that what was strange for me was that when I was inside of the VR so when I had the VR headset on my face and I was looking from left to right or up and down very quickly I wasn't able to see the change from the pixelated um, you know pixels to the normal rendered pixels so I'm not quite sure if it does it really fast 
or if it only does it now and then, or I don't know what's going on because as I said, you know, when I look at on the screen, uh, for example, if we look at here at the moment, as you can see, there isn't really much difference, although you can maybe tell, I mean, it seems to work sometimes and then sometimes it doesn't seem so maybe, maybe what's going on here is that it only works when it's supposed to and maybe not all the time. I'm not quite sure. I'll try to get more information. But at the end of the day, Acetokorata is running very, very smoothly at very high resolution. So all good. Really like that because we did have a lot of problems with the foveated rendering settings switched on before. It seems that they've gone away from that now. There is no issues whatsoever. And also, I love the auto adjust IPD, as I mentioned before in the video, where you just put your headset. It tells you whether your headset is put on properly. And the moment it says, OK, it will automatically ask you to look straight ahead and then it will adjust your IPD straight away. You don't have to do anything. I really think that is a super, super useful feature for the Pimax Crystal. So guys, do hit the notification bell after you subscribe to get more of the lowdown of the Pimax Crystal and plenty of other videos, of course, coming very soon. Until next time, take it easy, guys. I'll see you next time. Bye 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 bye.